This is the Chris Abraham Show. Hey, this is the Chris Abraham Show, season six, episode, I think six. My name's Chris Abraham, and uh, I have a, quite a funny theme today that has nothing to do with boundary issues yet, except it's not. Ah, uh, man, I cut right through my finger yesterday. I was trying to put this thing called a gym boss on one of the molly whips on the shoulders of one of my, uh, one of my backpacks. I think I'm going to put it on this one. And uh, it had one of those springs to allow the springy, um, I guess, clip to exist. And it broke. And I sliced my finger open with that uh, steel spring clip, uh, the bare spring. Uh, today I'm wearing an Agilite. I think it's called Agilite a Salt Pack because it's the perfect thing for me to use because I think today... I'm going to do a little bit of slow jogging. I think today is my first day of the rest of my life. I'm going to, and unlike the GORUCK bags, which are extremely heavy, I have like 90% of my gear, maybe 80% of my gear in here. And man, it feels like I'm not wearing anything. Mind you, yesterday I was wearing a 30 pound pack, uh, sorry, a pack with a 30 pound plate. So now that we've done all that for, uh, what is it called? For play. I wrote this onto uh, my abraham.su instance of Mastodon college, fall 2023. Everyone is looking for their safe spaces and their freedom of speech. And everyone's feeling unsafe and victimized and protected groups are feeling unsafe because they feel physically threatened by other protected groups. And free speech is being made to, quote, expensive, unquote, for anyone to enjoy because of cancel culture and doxing while the young Republicans and campus Christians are beginning to consider believing in karma. So that was my witticism for today. Aside from saying that when everybody calls everything war crimes and crimes against humanity, it's just like everybody calling everybody Nazis, uh, Hitler, and fascist. At some point, calling everybody and everything those things, it becomes meaningless and uh, even turns... The tables, like I said in yesterday's show, associating historically dangerous and awful epithets uh, to things that people value, which is safety, uh, lawfulness, um, not having anybody carjack them or rob them or steal from them or make them not want to go out at night or feel like they have to uh, move into a gated community or buy firearms or practice for a possible home invasion or reconsider where and if their kids go to K through 12 and reconsider where and if their children go to uh, a top 25 university or whether they make other choices. Um, so it seems to me that, uh, with regards to this on-campus craziness. Like, the only reason I thought of it and I came up with this banal witticism, my uh, twin sister, Linda Goyne, uh, my, my identical twin from a different decade, a different mother, a different father, and a different place on Earth, but she's still my genetic twin. She um, really, first of all, she is so extremely leftist that even I... Well, okay, she constantly calls me a, uh, what is it called, a um, tone-deaf, entitled, elitist fuck, or something like that, or she calls me all the mansplaining, white male entitlement, emperor. I wonder if when <laughs> Marlisa, my, my other sister, my other twin, from... From oh man, she was so indulging me. Marlisa met Marlisa Marlisa Mensink. Um, she used to call me Emperor, uh, and I think that was 
in the same way that Linda makes it, right? Like for me, as a overconfident uh, man who doesn't have any special skills, but has always been treated like a special little boy, when you call me something like Zeus or Emperor or anything like that, I'm going to take it face value. I'm going to like think that you think I'm Zeus or you think I'm the emperor of your life. You think I'm awesome. I'll take these things at face value as compliments, not as passive aggressive dicks. And I always tell people, lie to me beautifully. I would rather be flattered and attaboyed than constantly being group kicked down in the ground like in some Buffy movie where um, Sanders on the ground and 12 vampires are kicking the stuffing out of him. Oh, I'm on season six of Buffy, man. I have been fully immersed in Buffy. I enjoy one episode in the morning and one episode in the evenings. And man, season five was awesome. I used to think that season five and season six were junk because there was no Angel and no Cordelia and no high school, right? It's all college And I wasn't sure I liked Adam. I wasn't sure I liked Riley. I wasn't sure, you know. I knew that I loved uh, Willow and Tara. And I always liked Xander. But um, you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. If you know, you know. So based on this, I was listening to... uh, Was I listening to CNN? Or was I listening to Fox? Or was I listening to something else? I go through a lot of stuff. And anyway, this... uh, young woman was saying that her, her she's a co-ed, I'll say it. She was a young college age, undergrad college age woman. And she was like, my professors are telling me to take off my star of David, uh, my star of David from around my neck while on campus. And I don't know what to say, right? Like in a world when everybody's calling each other names, the people who've been calling the names who say that they've been called the names are being called the names and they're not liking it. And so she's like, I came to college because it was a safe space. And nobody has ever told me that college was a safe space. College isn't a safe space. That's, that's your daddy's freaking, um, uh, you know, that's your daddy's den, I guess, unless you have a rapey assaulting experience with your dad. But, um, college is supposed to be challenging And it's supposed to take all of your ideas and put them through a blender. And you're supposed to feel challenged and outraged and and excited. And you're supposed to change your mind and maybe about face on a couple things. And maybe build a little compassion and context to the world. It's not supposed to be an effing safe space. One of the great things about going to GW is that I spent all my years at GW in an excessively unsafe space. If you ever got off of campus, I mean, GW, I started in fall 1988, 89, 90, then went to uh, University of East Anglia, Norwich, which is an extremely safe space. Um, and then uh, and then I took a year of uh, French and UH Manoa, which is an extremely safe space. And before college and uh, senior year of high school, I ran out of credits to take. So I took philosophy courses my entire fresh uh, entire senior year at the uh, university that uh, touches St. Louis which is called Chaminade and that was a pretty safe space but it wasn't a safe space for ideas I mean at least I never you know me I never tell a fucking professor what he wants to hear I'll always try to bring up something that I think is important I think is interesting and I think is insightful It's not a safe space if you go into a classroom and you have a philosophical insight and everybody in the class uh, uh, hisses at you and tells you that you're making them feel unsafe, right? Like, it should be the college Republicans and the Christian uh, fellowships on campus who feel uh, the most threat and the most etc. So it's not okay that anybody on campus should have to remove their kippah or their star of david or their uh headscarf or their uh their their cross or not carry their prayer beads or be able to wear anything they want to signify 
you know, all the way down to uh, whatever type of, of clothes you need to wear in order to honor your God. Uh, free speech is always going to be the tough stuff. Free speech is never the easy stuff. So, like I said, uh, the young Republicans are starting to feel a little bit of karma, even though they necessarily do not even believe in yoga or karma or dharma because they like to think that those are vessels of evil i'm here at starbucks and i'll talk to you guys in a few now i'm not glee i know that i feel like i'm kind of rubbing it in everybody's face with regards to uh how amused i am how unsafe uh jewish americans and palestinian americans and israeli americans and muslim americans are feeling on campus. But, you know, GW was such an amazing place in the late 80s, right? There were, there were uh, tons of, of Kuwaitis and Persians, and uh, they were all rich. They all had, like, Lamborghinis. And then, of course, the nickname of GW, my alma mater, is GW Jew, which I consider a compliment, but a lot of people consider it an insult. And there was a very high proportion of Jewish students. And uh, so mode it be. And so it was an amazing experience. It was a constant dynamic tension between basically uh, rich young Jewish Americans and extremely rich young uh, Middle Easterners. But I don't think I really saw GW is not the kind of place to have, you know, debates in the quad kind of thing where... Uh, we might be at the top of the second tier, but we're certainly a second tier university. So we uh, never became that active, although it might be now. Our school went from scruffy second tier to Gucci second tier in the last 30 years. But I want the only reason I bring this up, and I promise I'm not dunking on all y'all. But I want to remind you that American democracy and America's constitution are not okay as long as Nazis are not allowed to speak their mind in the public space and unless literal Nazis dressed up in, you know, Hugo Boss with their dumb little swastikas are allowed to march, um, goose step or whatever they want down the main street, right? Because Nazis in America, like I'm talking about neo-Nazis, in, you know, Doc Martens with funny laces kind of Nazis. I'm also talking about the dudes with the white polo shirts and khakis and, uh, and, and tiki torches. And I'm also, I'm not talking about FBI agents dressed up as Nazis so as to start, so as to foment rage and get counter protesters and result in a vehicular manslaughter of a uh, Nazi versus Antifa counter-protester. That's not what I'm talking about. But if you can't create a, a world where a Nazi wearing, I guess they're tan outfits with jack boots and swastikas and funny BSDM, like, gay bear hats, you can't give them space to, to talk their crazy, unfettered, and unmolested... And if you do not allow them to peacefully protest by marching through Main Street, let's say in Maine, then you're going to end up, that, that's your canary in a coal mine. As long as America makes it safe for frickin' glamour Nazis, or what are they called? Uh, uh, um, I don't know, LARPing McLarp faces. Like, there's no way that anybody in a tan outfit with, with leather jack boots... Um, and a foppish, silly, blonde haircut, and a uh, sexy, like, BDSM uh, bear hat is ever going to be the leader of anything anywhere, right? Not even Nazis, not even fascists, not even white supremacists, like the, the, LARPing, the LARPing Nazis. Um, I feel like Nazism in America is sort of a gray man endeavor, where you have to know what you're looking for. In the same way that back in the day, when everybody was in the closet, you had signifiers, right? Theoretically, maybe, uh, same thing like neo-Nazis back in the day, I know for sure. Back in the day, 
gay culture, I think, worked around the color of the handkerchief hanging out of your pocket, like depending on what you're into or maybe the type of ear piercing you had. I know that amongst white supremacists and neo-Nazis in the 70s and 80s had a lot to do with uh, with the color of your uh, Doc, your Doc Martin eight, is it 18 inch boots, like whether they were this color or that. It was sort of like the Bloods and the Crips, right? It was a, a, a signifier that you knew if you knew and you don't know if you don't know. So generally speaking, if you create a signifier that brings up multi-generational trauma in public, you're the asshole, right? So don't be surprised if something terrible happened. Or you're just an FBI stooge or a federal agent who's trying to put that out there to uh, foment your paycheck, right? So if you make the world into a dangerous place and there's domestic terrorists everywhere and there's hidden cells of terrorists and don't forget 9-11 and don't forget January 6th, never forget January 6th, you can make sure that uh, you get all the budget. You know what they say about uh, government budget? Use it or lose it. So if we live in a safe country, you better be making crime in order to fight it. Um, anyway, back to the news. Uh, so, like I always tell everybody, the moment uh, a bunch of dressed up uh, Nazi McNazi faces who are dressed like it's uh, 1939 and a half in their Hugo Boss inspired vestments and tall, shiny man boots, the moment they are not given free access to speak their crazy out in public, and march their crazy or jack boot or jack, you know, duck, 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 duck march, goose march, goose step themselves uh, up and down the boulevard without counter protesters throwing, like it's always the escalation, right? 100% of the time, it's you asshole Antifa fucks who escalate these things to where it becomes vehicular manslaughter and, um, and getting shot in the face. So anyway... It's never the crime, it's always the escalation. Never the crime, always the escalation that results in getting shot in face. Not shot in Freuda, shot in face Um So as long as they're safe and able to do their crazy out in public by, you know, feeling all powerful and performative and, you know, don't forget this is before they had, um, before they had uh, uh, bronies, right? Like I'm sure these guys who are dressed up in fabulous Russian uh, Nazi attire, like became bronies and or and or uh, whatever the repression resulted in, they became uh, brony bears. That's what they became, brony bears. Um, all probably repressed LGBTQIA people who needed to kind of let a different freak flag fly, and not the Russia, not the not the the Nazi spastika on a white circle, on a red field. That was not their kink. Although, honestly, pride flag, pride parade, a lot of commonalities there, I hate to say. So, if you disallow the free, unfettered access to public space and communication of your biggest bogeyman, the literal World War II Hitler-esque, um, you know, uh, boss attired Nazi avatar, then once you start making that illegal or that frowned upon or that must be responded to with extreme violence and shouted down or punched down or or literally by any means necessary quelled, you're soon going to find yourself with your Justice for Palestine parade and your Palestine flag and your Palestine inspired neckerchiefs, uh, you're going to find yourself uh, in jail or oppressed or repressed or doxxed or blackballed or thrown asunder. Or if you oppress and suppress and annihilate the ability of fancy dress, costumed, be costumed, be decked, silly face Nazis literal Nazis in tan and blousey pants and and shiny freaking jackboots, funny hats and funny mustaches and foppish hair. If you suppress that, then before you know it, uh, 
the same exact thing is going to happen to you with your amazing white flag with uh, blue Star of David and your uh, kippas and your uh, um, uh, ubiquitous, the GW ubiquitous, beautiful Star of David necklaces and um, and parades in support of, of Israel. There'll be counter-protesters, maybe Antifa, who are going to call you Nazis and throw bricks at you and, uh, and maybe shoot you in the face or not um, and maybe take pictures of you and dox you and your family and all that other fun stuff. There'll be, uh, because we killed, we killed, we snuffed it out because by any means necessary, we snuffed out our little canary in the coal mine, which is the crazy, bizarre, anachronistic, silly guys in fancy dress costume uh, designed to make you go completely crazy. And you, very well in the last 20 years, put your... When, when the ACLU stopped legally protecting and representing those crazy drama queen, theater kid, cop be costumed Nazis and turned their back on them, the ACLU literally put a pillow over the poor little beak and snuffed it out. And now all of those laws... All of those precedents, P-R-E-C-E-D-E-N-T-S, and all that precedents, P-R-E-C-E-D-E-N-C-E, are being levied and used against your protected class based on the precedent that any kind of hurtful speech, based on what anybody finds hurtful, and based on the fact that any words can be violent, and any words can hurt, and any words can be hate crimes, and crimes against humanity and war crimes, you made your bed, and now you're going to sleep in it, and I don't know if you're going to be comfortable with that, and you literally will not know what to do. I mean, it's going to be incredible to think about that. Anyway, love you guys. Chris Abraham Show, Season 6, Episode 6, about all kinds of crazy stuff. Love you. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.